I think in 2024, Warzone is possibly going to make its largest mistake as a franchise. And I'm not overestimating this when I say it could be something that defines whether or not Warzone sees another resurgence and becomes very popular, or becomes something that not very many people are interested in playing. Heading into Season 3 of Warzone, we are seeing the return of the second piece of old content into Call of Duty. We're seeing the return of Rebirth Island, which on top of the return of Fortune's Keep, is two previous maps that have previously existed in Warzone being brought back into the fray. There are lots of speculations and rumors on the horizon that Verdansk is going to be the big map feature for the new Call of Duty later in 2024. And if that is the case, that means Call of Duty is going to go a whole year without any new content being brought into Warzone, which I think is a huge red flag and something that most people probably haven't realized could be a franchise killer. And I think the simple reality is, is that Call of Duty is vastly overestimating the power of old content in the current iteration of Warzone. It's been very interesting watching Call of Duty Warzone develop because all of the years seem to have their own individual problems. The first major year of Warzone in the Verdansk era was obviously plagued by cheaters and plagued by a slow rollout of content. The second year of Warzone decided to try to entirely reinvent the wheel, and whilst it did have lots of new content, Almazra, Ashika Island, and Vondel being the three pieces of content that it got, it just wasn't Warzone. The general structure and flow of the game didn't work, the way they changed mechanics didn't work, and Warzone 3.0, if you will, has spent all of its time fixing all of the issues they created for themselves in this second year period. And now with Warzone in 2024, the third iteration of Warzone, if you will, we're almost seeing them try to reclaim everything they had. The movement system, the way the game works, and also now the content itself is being brought back into Warzone. But I do feel there is a vast overestimation of how much this content is actually wanted. Because yes, people loved Fortune's Keep, people love Rebirth Island, and people definitely love Verdansk. But will that keep them playing for the rest of the year? I don't think it will. I think Fortune's Keep is a raging example of this, because Fortune's Keep is arguably one of the best received maps Call of Duty has ever produced. Rebirth Island has existed for a very, very long time, long before Warzone was even a thing, and it has been around for an extreme time as Alcatraz, and it's something that's been rinsed over and over again. But Fortune's Keep was something fresh and original, and even when they introduced that into Season 2, here in Warzone 3.0 if you will in 2024, the hype and anticipation for this map almost died instantly. I genuinely didn't see anybody on my casual friends list playing Fortune's Keep beyond the first week or two that it dropped, and for the most part that seems to have been the reception everywhere. Whilst it did add new content to the Resurgence roster, and I think that's something that was good, I think people are greatly overestimating the value this content has, and I think the same is going to occur for Rebirth Island. Rebirth Island, in my view, is a decent map, but it's not a great map, and in fact there are many things wrong with Rebirth Island in terms of cover, the way the map's laid out, and how things work, that are going to be growing pains for this version of Call of Duty. I genuinely don't think Rebirth Island is going to have the pool people think it will, and the entire marketing event for this new season in Season 3 was geared towards, hey guys, Warzone has Rebirth again, please come back and play, it's fun with friends, Rebirth's back, Bring your mates, Rebus here, bring your friends guys, please play Warzone again. When in reality, I think those people will pick it up for a week, realize that it's still Warzone, and not continue with it. I'm not doubting in any way, shape, or form that Rebirth Island is going to attract attention. It absolutely will, and people are going to be interested in it. But it's something they've played for an extreme amount of time now, and after a week it is going to lose its magic. And I give you that as a guarantee already. And I genuinely do believe if Verdansk does release later this year in 2024, around October, November, whenever it so happens to be, I think that map will have about a month or two's worth of pull before people genuinely stop caring, and the only way they potentially even improve those odds is if they return Verdansk and Almazra at the same time and allow a rotation between the big map system, and even then, that will still be fatiguing. And the reason why I think all of this old content has been vastly overestimated is because I think Call of Duty doesn't seem to understand why people are quitting Call of Duty, why people are putting it away, and also overestimating the value of this old content for one key reason. 
People are leaving Warzone not because Warzone doesn't have the content they want or is just lacking generally for content. Warzone generally produced some of the most. But they're leaving Warzone because there's fundamental problems with the game and lots of little issues that make people quit. And I liken the current state of Warzone to what Operation Health was for Rainbow Six Siege. There wasn't one specific thing wrong with Rainbow Six Siege at the time, there was lots of little things that created frustration. And the same applies here. At a fundamental level, Warzone has three large problems. One, a lack of functioning anti-cheat. Two, a server system that is poor, doesn't work well, and produces really bad hit reg and general networking. And three, a balancing system that doesn't work very well all the time, and whilst it has improved, it still needs some work. And definitely you could have a fourth if you wanted to mention the differences between mouse and keyboard and controller. That's definitely been a stifling point for a large number of players on PC. I play a lot of FPS games. I play all sorts of games across all sorts of genres. I've played Siege, I've played Valorant, I've played CS, I've played tactical shooters, I've played co-op shooters. And the number one thing that makes people leave those experiences are frustrating things that the game is to blame for. I play Valorant and I'm not very good at it. But I play Valorant over and over again because Valorant has great audio, a perfect server system, and a functioning anti-cheat that works very well that means that if I suck at Valorant, it's because I suck. Whereas right now in Warzone, there are genuine legitimate reasons for players to stop playing beyond their own gameplay or beyond the caliber of that player. If you wanted to play Warzone right now, you have to contend with laggy and disconnecting servers, often with poor hit reg. You have to contend with the fact that there is a very high chance that you will get cheaters against you. And that's not me being pessimistic or me saying that there are lots of cheaters in Warzone all the time. It's just a simple matter of fact. Warzone anti-cheat does not work. And until it's an always on anti-cheat, it's never going to work. And even if you can look past those two fundamental flaws, you still have to contend with a balancing system that heavily caters towards new content, forcing you to grind your way through multiple levels of content in order to even be able to play the game on a level playing field. And if Call of Duty really wants people to stick around and actually play the game or come back and enjoy Warzone, at a very basic level, they have to fix those things. And if they fix those things, then the content can really start to speak for itself. Now, the second thing is overestimating the power of this old content. And the reason I call it an overestimation is whilst your audience may believe that old content's lots of fun and they want to see it, this is the kind of fundamental flaw. Yes, your audience wants to see old content, but at the same time, your audience thinks you shouldn't have never got rid of it in the first place. So whilst you will be bringing back Rebirth Island, everybody's just gonna go, oh, why did you get rid of it? Why was Rebirth gone in the first place? And nobody is going to applaud Call of Duty or put a pat on their back for putting in content that previously existed again. That's the flaw here. This isn't new content, it's old content. And for most people, it's content that shouldn't have left in the first place. And because you're simply plastering it back into the game in 2024, you're not going to receive a round of applause for that. I have a lot of understanding of game development and I fully understand how much work this has probably been in terms of unpacking Warzone into this project that was only designed for a year and then was meant to be abandoned into a current iteration that has quality of life features, general functionality, and is trying to bring back older content from previous iterations of Warzone, which is likely hard work from a development standpoint. But the reality is, and the public perception will always be, this shouldn't have left in the first place, and we're simply reinventing the wheel. So whilst people will think it's cool, and a lot of people will enjoy it, I don't see them sticking around for it, and I think that's the hard truth. And the final point, and this is genuinely just a point that I think of my own, is that innovations have genuinely been the best part of Warzone, and we're starting to see less of them, because Call of Duty is relying on bringing back this old content to appease a group of fans that have long since left the game, because the reality is, is that the game died for them. Innovations like zip lines around the map and redeployment balloons, innovations like swimmable water, restructuring how vehicles work and take damage, completely redesigning how buildings can be pushed and defended and countered and attacked, and balance models for weapons and guns, and even innovations like the Warzone ranking system have genuinely been the enjoyable parts of 2024. Likewise, the quality of life improvements have been the genuinely enjoyable parts of 2024 because they make the game more predictable, more readable, and more enjoyable for people as they learn the learning curve that is Warzone. 
Whilst I'm sure quality of life improvements will continue to be part of the game, overestimating old content as something that's going to bring people back as opposed to having a steady base of new innovations that genuinely improve the structure of Warzone is the Achilles heel to everything that they're doing. I'm really curious to see you guys' point of view on this. This is my own estimation, and to some extent I genuinely do believe that some people, despite what they say they want, don't actually know exactly what they want. But I'm curious to see what you, the wider audience and people who play Warzone regularly, have to say and what you think and feel. As always folks, if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, drop a sub, and I'll see you again in the next one.